Hey guys, it's Nina B. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my hair growth secrets. As you guys know, if you're new, back in November, okay, so this past November, I went to the um, hair salon to get my hair colored black. So my hair is currently black. Getting my hair done, sitting in a chair, long story short, it feels like the stylist is just combing through my hair. I'm looking at my phone, okay? She just got done blow drying my hair. It feels like she's taking the comb, just breaking through my hair, just combing. I just feel combing. All right, no big deal. Mind you, there's no mirrors in front of me. The mirror is right behind me, so I can't see. There is a booth about 20, 30 feet away from me, and I can kind of see in that mirror. And in between me and that mirror, there is a tall column. All I can see is the top of my head, and I see her taking up pieces of hair as if she's trimming and I see snip, snip, snip. She had been cutting my hair. Okay, mind you, this was my first ever time going to her. She never asked me if I needed to cut. Okay, like I said, this was in November. I already trimmed my hair in August. There was no need for me to have a trim in November, okay? Being that I am a new client, you should have asked me, hey, can I trim your hair? Can I cut my hair? My hair was in great health. Here's a picture of how my hair was before she cut it. And here's a picture of my hair after she cut it. All right. Like I said, I trimmed my hair in August. This was in November. There was no need. That was a direct cut. She cut about a good three inches off my hair. So, all right, from November, I was enraged. Okay. Here we are in January and I'm growing my hair back. So this is my hair right now. I took a picture of how my hair looked when she cut it, which is just like this. I have the same shirt. I have the white, you know, you can see where my hair rests right above the white line. Here is my hair after I just straightened it. When did I straighten my hair? I literally straightened my hair last week. Can you see the growth? That is within two months, you guys, two months. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my hair growth secrets on how I got my hair to grow a good inch and a half within those two months. Get your pen and paper out. Take some notes because this is about to get I actually do have some notes because I don't want to forget anything in this video. In between the two months, I've always been using, well, no, starting last year, I incorporated something different into my wash routine, which was incorporating a massage brush. Since I've been using a massage brush, it really helps me. I sometimes struggle, oftentimes struggle with like dandruff or dry scalp. So my scalp really needs a deep cleanse, a good exfoliation, a nice massage. And so I incorporated this into my wash day routine. So while I'm shampooing my hair, instead of using my hands, my fingernails are very short nubs. So before I started using the massage brush, I would just like massage my fingers, the pads of my fingers, not the nails. Never wash your hair with your nails. Again, I went to another stylist sometime last year because I wanted some color and she washed my hair with her fingernails okay then as she was blow drying my hair she saw like all the dandruff coming out or like dry scalp really at that point um she was blow drying my hair and like you can see all of it coming out and she was like do you have like scalp problems or whatever and i was like yeah but i, I treat it on my own so basically long story short because she washed her hair with i mean because she washed my hair with her fingernails my scalp is not used to that so it did flake up when i wash my hair with this and the pads of my fingers kind of like at the same time i don't i don't have that problem so that's why i encourage you do not wash your hair with your fingernails you're going to cause a little bit of damage irritation to your scalp i am not a professional i'm speaking from my experience so i started transitioning over earlier last year to using a massage brush i feel like it speeds up growth it gives me a dip a deep cleanse the second tip I can give to you guys is clean your hairbrushes. Now, what is, oh, it's got a little hair on it. This is not a hairbrush, okay? 
I always brush my hair, comb my hair throughout the day or like, you know, if I'm styling, you know, we all use hair brushes or whatever. Dirt, oils, product buildup can accumulate in those brushes and it is very important to make sure that you are cleansing your brushes. This is a tool that I use to clean my hair brushes. This is what it looks like. It kind of looks like a almost a teaser type brush. And then on the bottom, it has these teeth on the end. So I'm going to do a little demonstration. I typically use Tangle teasers whenever I'm combing my hair like 99% of the time. So what I'll do is when my hairbrush is full of hair or even before it even builds up, I just cleanse my hairbrush at least a good once a week or every other week. I do not like to let the hair build up. Again, if I know that I struggle with dry scalp or dandruff, I don't need to be putting these irritants back into my scalp and just like putting a dirty brush on my scalp. That's the last thing it needs. So what I do is I run my brush under some hot water and I add a little bit of my shampoo. I take this brush and I go just like that. It removes all the hair and build up. And if I see I miss any extra hairs, I flip the um, brush over and like pick out those hairs. I literally clean my hair brushes. I know I've seen some people soak it in the sink. I've been cleaning my hair brushes way before it became a little TikTok craze type of trend. Make sure you clean your hair brushes because that can also affect your growth. Healthy scalp, healthy hair. Damaged, build up, dirty, yucky, stinky scalp is not good for um, if you're trying to build a good foundation to grow your hair out. Next thing that I have been doing since last year and in between the time that of course i got my hair cut from november to now is i have been taking this iron supplement this is called floridix iron and herbs i picked this up from my local health food store i was just taking it because my iron was a little bit low at the time but i just never stopped taking it and i'm still continuing to take it i've honestly been through a good i don't know how many bottles four bottles of these these last me a good what two and a half months I just bought this bottle like last month. I think you're supposed to take like 20, yeah, 10 milliliters twice a day. So that's what you do with this stuff. So this is iron and herbs. It has wonderful ingredients. What you put into your body is very important. This is just what I've been doing. Um, this has thiamine, riboflavin, B6, B12, iron, of course. Um, rose hips rose hip oil is good for your hair and i'll get into that later in my second part two of this video all right so it has rose hip fennel fruits spinach leaves spinach is a form of iron iron green leafy vegetables lots and lots of healthy good yummy stuff i do believe maybe the b vitamins may play a key role in my growth between the two months from the before when the same day I got my hair cut and then the after to like to now that two month period like I said I've been taking that all throughout the year going through several bottles of it and I think it could play a key role in my hair growth my next tip that I've discovered that helped me grow my hair grow my hair is leaving my hair alone when I say leave my hair alone, sometimes um, once my silk press gets old and I will just take all of my hair, put it in a braid, you know, just one braid down, the, down my back. And I'll leave that same braid in for a good four, five days, take it out, comb it out, get the sh shedded hair out, and I will rebraid my hair, leave it alone for another four or five days. I guess that's a form of protective style. I also have another few protective styles that I like to do. Leaving your hair alone, even when my hair is just straight. If I just feel lazy, I'll keep a bonnet on for a good three, four days without brushing my hair. Because I just don't like to manipulate. I don't feel the need to brush, run my fingers through my hair, comb my hair every single day. It's under manipulation. So I'll go a good three, four days just doing absolutely nothing to my hair and I find that that helps me. The next tip that I can say is not oiling my scalp every day. A couple years ago, had bad dandruff, dry scalp. I was oiling my hair every single day trying to mask and resolve the problem, but really it was returning. Let's say I had oiled my scalp on Monday. 
it was coming back like my scalp would just absorb the oil suck it up like a straw and be back like the next day or like two days later so what i found is not oiling my scalp every single day now actually helps me and i i feel like i noticed a difference my scalp is not like how it used to be and i think i could attribute that to not oiling it so much um i know people are like oil your scalp every day oil your scalp every day if you want long hair oil your scalp every day um i feel like i kind of disagree with that maybe oiling it a good twice a week three times tops is good enough for me personally and even like one of the hairstylists i went to was like do you oil your scalp every day i was like no i do it like blah 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 times a week and she was like okay that's good because when you oil your scalp every day it's like you're telling yourself first of all your scalp produces sebum sebum is your hair's natural oil so when you're doing that and it's relying on an oil every single day it's hard for it to like produce that oil or it will overproduce that oil and multiply your problem with dandruff which i found was happening to me so i don't oil my scalp every day and it actually helps when i do oil my scalp this is what i've been using this is the rosemary um hair oil by camille rose i've been using the same oil for the past four and a half months three or four and a half months i do not use it every day this is where the oil is and i find that it's been working wonders now the name of it is a little bit misleading it's just called rosemary oil someone can pick this up oh my gosh i need me some rosemary oil that's not what this is this has tons of other great ingredients in here but it's not just solely rosemary oil when i straighten my hair i go a good two and a half weeks putting no product in it no oils no anything once i hit that two and a half week mark i will start to oil my scalp and even then once i start to oil my scalp i do it for a good twice a week i'll oil my scalp for a good twice a week and as I progress with my silk press and it continues to get older and older, then I'll do it for a good three times in a week. Three times in a week. And then boom, it's time for me to wash my hair and do the cycle all over again. And as you can see from the growth, well, when I got it cut to now, well, when I got it cut in November to now, which is January, you see the growth that has occurred within those, those two months. This was the only oil that i have been using i feel like i was doing like a i'm going to do no science experiment i'm the type of person i have a million oils underneath my sink in my bathroom i go through one oil at a time i don't mix oils one week i'm using this next week i'm using something else the week after that i'm using something else it's kind of like a science experiment where you have an independent variable and a dependent variable this is the thing that has not been changing for me for the past like i said three four months i've been using these same oils from you know the time i got it cut to now this thing has never changed this has several great ingredients this is very castor oil based it is a very thick oil and that is because it is castor oil in here castor oil promotes thicker fuller healthier hair if you have struggle with thin hair or hair thinning or um, maybe hair loss castor oil really helps to grow your hair and make it thicker it still split ends another good ingredient here you have rosemary obviously rosemary is the top trend right now everybody's trying to make well uh rosemary oil from home and you know they sell it on the shelves at your health food stores rosemary oil alone is a very very potent oil it, that's why it comes with a dropper you do not need a lot of drops Rosemary oil on its own is a stimulation oil. What is stimulation? Stimulation is a circulation of blood flow. When you have that in your scalp, that is going to promote growth. When you're trying to grow your hair out, it's important to use stimulating oils. But with it being a stimulation oil, it is a potent oil and you do not need a lot of it. That is why this is not solely a rosemary oil. If you are doing that, that is I feel like you're doing more damage than good if you're only solely using a potent oil. If you are using a potent oil, you need to mix it with a carrier oil, such as olive oil, coconut oil, just any type of um, carrier oil. Peppermint is also a very potent stimulating oil. You get that cooling, tingling, 
sensation on your scalp. I can go on and on about the ingredients in here. This has great, wonderful ingredients, and I do believe it had to play a little role in contributing to my hair growth within these past two months. Not only when I do oil my scalp with this, I follow it up with a two to three minute massage with my uh, nubby pads of my fingers. I'll massage my hair, I mean my scalp, for a good two to three minutes. Also, I will rub this oil all on the shafts of my hair. I will rub it on my hair. Not a large amount because it is very thick and will make your hair greasy, okay? Your hair, after you massage your scalp, looks like a rat's nest. That is when I come in with my brush. When your hair looks like that, after you oil your scalp, you do not want to start from your, your roots and brush that down. You are breaking your hair, you're causing damage, and you're making it brittle, okay? You want to start from the ends of your hair, work it up to your roots, work it up to your roots. Gently get that shedded hair out. You don't want to do that. That's like the worst thing. That completes part one of this video. I will have a part two coming out very, very soon so we can get into this juicy uh, secret recipe that I have for my deep conditioning treatments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.